Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. A couple times a year, I like to uh, do what I call a choose your own adventure video. We take the S&P 500 or some other uh, widely followed chart and we outline four potential scenarios. Today, I'll ask you to review those four scenarios and vote on which one you see as most likely and why. So when I am coaching uh, new technical analysts, uh, new adventures, financial advisors in terms of upgrading their investment process, I always talk to them about what I call probabilistic investing. See, we always like to think of our thesis, our narrative, right? Stocks are going higher. Bitcoin's going lower. This particular name is going to do X, Y, Z. We have sort of this idea of what's going to happen, and we position ourselves to benefit from that future path. But what happens when something different happens, something unexpected? Well, we're often caught on the wrong side of things. We have to scramble to manage risk and uh, and minimize our losses. So what I would encourage people to, think, uh, to do is think not in terms of absolutes, not in terms of um, you know uh, definite outcomes, but in terms of probabilities. What's the most probable outcome? And think about that and position for that. But then what are the alternate scenarios? And think about different potential future paths for any of the stocks or ETFs or, or any chart really that you're looking at. By considering those future paths now, those different possibilities, you open your mind, you stretch yourself out of your predetermined thesis and think more about very bullish, very bearish scenarios and everything in between. So today I'll, I'll outline four different scenarios for the S&P 500. And again, as you watch, once you're done and uh, thinking about those four scenarios, let me know in the comments which one you see is most likely and why. Let's get to the chart. Okay, so here we have the chart of the S&P 500 going back to middle of 2021. So we have the second half of 2021, nice uptrend for the S&P, really turned on a dime in January, although a lot of things like small caps, like the NASDAQ, a lot of breadth measures, momentum measures, all actually topped out in November. And when the S&P made a new high in January, a lot of those indicators like RSI and others actually made a lower high. From there, we've been in a pretty well-established downtrend. Overall, the uh, the market has been in a bearish phase, although there have been certain stocks and sectors like energy that have actually had a pretty decent 2022. But our growth-oriented benchmarks overall have been in a distribution phase, and I would define that as a long-term pattern of lower highs and lower lows. We've had three pretty significant bear market rallies so far in 2022. First one is uh, February through uh, really uh, end of March, uh, which is a nice move, about 11% on a closing basis. Here we had the move June to August, this nice rally. This is when uh, the value-oriented stuff like energy and industrials actually took a break. And the growthy stuff, things like technology and communications names actually rallied pretty good going into uh, to mid-August. The S&P tested its 200-day moving average and then made a new low for uh, 52 weeks uh, there in October, just briefly touching below 3,500 um, uh, on an intraday basis. From there, we've bounced higher. And now we're up 10, 15%, depending on what you're looking at uh, from the uh, from the intraday low in October. So what's next? So here's the situation. We've had the good rally. We're back above the 50-day moving average. We're now approaching the 200-day moving average. We had an incredible move higher. Last week was the news on FTX, the inflation data, all of that netted out to a pretty strong week for stocks. This week has been more about a backing and filling, right? No real clear follow through to the upside, more of a consolidation phase. So with that as a setup, here are the four different scenarios, what they would look like and how they would probably play out. Let's start with the wildly bullish scenario or the very bullish scenario. In the very bullish scenario, we would have to get through the 200-day moving average very soon. Between now and year end, you most likely eclipse the 200-day. And not only there, you don't even stop at the August high. That 4,300 level is an important one. And it's so clear cut on the charts that I know from talking with a lot of institutional investors and other uh, practitioners in the industry, we're all keyed in on that 4,300 level, which means you'd most likely expect resistance. But what if we have enough buying momentum to push through 4,300? The wildly bullish scenario really plays on the seasonal tendencies in November and December. November and December tend to be pretty strong months for the S&P 500, particularly in a midterm election year, which is what's happening uh, in 2022. So between the election, second week in uh, November, through year end, where you have the traditional Santa Claus rally, a period of strength going into year end, that would basically mean all of those tailwinds for equity prices play out as expected. Price goes higher through the 200-day, through 4,300, and we finish the year above there. We even retest all-time highs at 4,800. The RSI, the momentum, by the way, 
would have to break through 60 to get us to that point. That would have to uh, indicate strong upside momentum. So the very bullish scenario takes us above 4,300, potentially making a new all-time high going into year end. Scenario number two, the mildly bullish scenario would be we break through the 200-day moving average, but we don't get above the August highs. This is a common scenario to think about because it's fairly reasonable to see a similar move in June to what we see in uh, in uh, June, July to what we see in October, November, right? So we've had a nice rally off the lows, a nice uh, rally phase with a lot of individual stocks doing very well. The mildly bullish scenario means we continue to go to the upside, right? This is a brief pause this week, but then we rally, continue through the 200 day moving average. But the mildly bullish scenario, the difference between scenario one and two is on the second one, we don't get much above 4,300, right? We sort of stall out at the August high. If you look back in uh, March into April, that was one of the great tells that the longer bear market phase probably had more to go, was we had this nice rally in March, but then we really didn't get much above the uh, February high. We traded above it for one or two days, but then came right back out, right back lower. So there was an exhaustion of buyers, a lot of excitement pushing stocks to the previous peak, but not enough momentum to power through it. That's what scenario two uh, looks like. We rally through the 200 day. We stall out at the 4,300 and probably end up within this range between 3,600 and, and 4,300. And I would say in the mildly bullish scenario, we finish above current levels, right? So sort of above 4,000, we'll call it. Scenario three, the mildly bearish scenario is basically we spend the rest of the year in the lower half of this range. Again, think about 4,300 on the upper end, about 3,600 on the lower end. The mildly bearish scenario means we do not get above the 200-day moving average. So it stalls out in a similar way that we saw in August. This is indeed a bear market rally that has uh, not too much further to go. We don't get follow through. We don't get that validation of a break above the 200-day. Just like we saw in August, we have a retracement or a retrenchment, a further retest of these lows uh, from June and October. Maybe this sets up for a big inverted head and shoulders with a head, a lower, uh, you know, a, a shoulder here and another shoulder there, uh, sort of in the uh, fourth quarter beginning of next year, which could set us up for a nice rally in the first quarter. So the mildly bearish scenario is just mildly bearish through year end. From there, it might actually certainly could turn high, right? That's when you reassess and think about four new scenarios. So mildly bearish, we do not get above the 200-day moving average, but really don't make new lows, right? We stay above 3,600, 3,500. We sort of stay in this range and we end the year not above the 200 day, but sort of in the middle of this range that we've been in for the last six months. That brings us to the very bearish scenario. What does that look like? Well, we certainly have to stall out here, right? We would be near the uh, exhaustion point of this move. Probably don't get above the 200 day moving average. Not only do we retest the lows, but we undercut 3,500. One of the uh, you know uh, downside objectives I've talked about earlier in the year is S&P 3200. The very bearish scenario means that downside objective becomes a reality sooner rather than later. We have weakness going into year end instead of the normal seasonal strength. This would be an unusual pattern. It's certainly something that we've seen. There's precedent to the market being weak in the fourth quarter. This means the rally in October was a bear market rally. It's soon to uh, to be completed. And now we roll over and retest the lows and more. That's what the very bearish scenario would look like. So think about those four different scenarios. And as a quick recap, the very bullish scenario, we break through the 200 day and continue through 4,300, finish the year above 4,300, potentially making a new high in the 4,800 range going into year end. The mildly bullish scenario, scenario two, would be we break above the 4,200, but we stall out before we get much above 4,300. That ends up being a double top of sorts, and we sort of stall out and finish the year sort of in the 4,000 to 4,300 range. The mildly bearish scenario, scenario number three, means we don't get above the 200-day moving average, but we don't make a new low. We sort of settle in and sort of continue this consolidation pattern that's really been going for the last four or uh, five months. The very bearish scenario means not only do we stall out fail to get above the 200 day, we actually break to a new low below 3,600, below 3,500. And we show weakness going into your end instead of strength. So there you have it. You have four potential scenarios. Scenario one, the very bullish scenario. Scenario two, the mildly bullish scenario. Scenario three, the mildly bearish scenario. Scenario four, the uh, very bearish scenario where we make new lows for the year. Which of those four do you see as most likely and why? And the real point of this exercise is not to get the call right, because a lot of times that's not the great measure of, uh, of success. It's how you navigate through that period, right? Think about what your current portfolio would do in scenario one, 
through scenario four? At what point would you need to change your positioning if scenario one or scenario four would play out? What stocks or ETFs in your current holdings would do well or do poorly in these different scenarios? By thinking through those opportunities, those different future paths now, you will be much better prepared for whatever happens. For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Have a great one. We'll talk to you again soon.